All right, so we are going to play the original Settlers of Catan. So this is the follow-up video to the kids' um, explanation video of all the pieces. So go ahead and check out that video if you're unsure of the pieces that are on the table. So we're going to start with setting up the board. So we'll move all the pieces away. So the first thing you want to do is use the shores to make a giant hex. So they are labeled with numbers, so you it's easy to put together. However, it's just as easy to mix and match. So the numbers do not have to be perfect. So. Okay, so the first part is you want your desert in the middle. In the instruction booklet, the it has a layout of how you can put all the small hexes. Again, we've played this lot, so to switch it up, we've just randomized all the pieces, and we're just going to put them in. So now that that's done, you put on the, the numbers. So again, in the instruction booklet, it'll tell you where to put the numbers. Um, actually, our board is quite even. Um, we've had times when we've had all hills in one corner. It just makes for a different gameplay. That's all it really does. So the way we do random numbers is we just take the number, number spots that we want to use, we shake them up in our hand, and we kind of just sprinkle them around the board. And if there's some numbers that we really don't like beside each other, then we'll move them around. So sixes and eights, we don't like them beside each other. They often roll quite a bit, so we like to split them up a little bit. So we're just going to quickly go like that. And uh, yeah, overall it looks, first glance it looks good. Just like that. So each player will take their color. So mom's going to be blue. Kids are going to be red, and dad is going to be white. Next is laying out the resource cards. And actually, I'm going to switch this up. I'm going to put it on this side. The kids' arms are shorter, so we're going to move them over this way. And then you play right here with the longest road, where you need five roads in a row, and the largest army. For the night cards. We have our shuffle deck. Uh, where should I put this one? We'll put it right here. We have the shuffle deck of development cards right here. We put the robber in the desert. And that's where he starts off until the first seven is rolled. And then we're going to roll to see who goes first. for dad okay so mom's gonna go first I got a three so I'll take the other base so the way placement orders is in the original Catan you place two settlements to start with the two roads so I rolled the highest so I'm gonna place first I place one settlement. The kids will go next. And then 
and dad places his settlement. Oh, last minute change. And then to place the second settlement, dad actually gets to go again. So kind of the benefit of voting last is you get to place two in a row. Um, so because I rolled the highest, I went first, going clockwise. When you hit the last person, then it'll come back. So daddy's going to place his road and then the kids will place their last settlement as well as their road. Red is not very happy. So, I don't know if you heard the <laughs> red and yeah, the kids kind of got upset where I placed because their goal was to build roads, get the longest road and connect everything, but too bad for you. Now I'm going to win. All right, so to start the game, you need to start with some resources. So the last settlement that you placed, so for me it was here you pick up the resources. So I would pick up two wood and one wheat. And that is my starting resources. So the last settlement that he placed was over here. Nope. Just the last settlement, not the first one. Oh. Sorry. All right. So then the game starts. And we'll walk you through the first couple of rounds. And, um, and then we'll speed it up from there and stop if uh, we have anything else to explain. Right. So dice. So I rolled an 11. So anybody who has a settlement on an 11, which is white and blue, you get to pick up that resource. So I would pick up a wood and white picked up a sheep. So again, you have these awesome cards that show you what you need to build each thing. Showing you my hand. I really, cheaters over here. I really, I cannot build anything. However, I can trade. So, does anybody have any brick? I'll give you a wood. Wheat? I don't want wheat. Um, I'll take sheep. No, that's all I have, brick and wheat. So, if nobody wants your trade, which these guys are stingy, you pass the dice. So they rolled a two. Two. There's our two. Nobody's built on it. So they're not doing anything. Nine. So now white can choose to trade or build. Does anybody have wood? I do. And you just want brick? I'll take anything except wood. Uh, sheep? Yeah. So then you go ahead. You trade, so now he can trade again, or he can build. Um, one more wood. No. Okay. Go. So he's building a road with a brick and a wood. And then you just place them right into the bank. So I rolled a six. So white and red collect. I do not. I still cannot do anything with my hand. Does anybody want to give me a brick? 
Okay, so real quickly, I have the cards to make a settlement. However, I cannot build a settlement because all settlements need to be at least two roads apart. So I have to build a road first. And you know what, I'm gonna go actually, no, I'm gonna go this way. Five. I'll pick up for white. He just left the table. So the kids built a road. No trades. So then they'll pass the dice. So we'll kind of go real quick here. Uh, we'll speed up gameplay for a bit. Oh, no, we won't. Seven. No, we won't because that's our first seven. So if you roll a seven, that player, so white, dad, he gets to move the robber. So dad places the robber there because it will affect red and blue. So now every time an eight is rolled, we cannot collect our wood. On top of that, he gets to steal from one of us. Oh. And that is his turn. Now he can trade or build. Development card. So we're going to... Go ahead and speed up gameplay now. Okay, so the kids have built here on this harbor. So building on a harbor allows you to do special trades. So they are on the wheat harbor, which allows them to trade two wheat. And for whatever we want. For whatever they want. So they gave two wheat and they're going to take a wood. So there is a special harbor for each of the resources. And then there's also the special three to one harbors where you can trade three of the same thing for a resource of your choice. If you do not have a harbor, like blue and white, it's four to one. So you would, you would trade in four of one resource for your choice. And now we'll continue. So before you roll, you can choose to play a knight card. So a knight card, you get to move the robber without rolling a seven. So dad moved the robber because he played a knight card. He moved it back to our eight and he's going to steal it from me. Now he will keep that knight card in front of him till the end of the game. If he collects three or more knight cards, he will win the largest army with, which is worth two more victory points. All right, so dad's getting ready to build a settlement here, but he's missing a wheat. So he has apparently a whole lot of sheep. So he's trading in the sheep four to one so that he can build his settlement. Oh, I didn't roll yet. Oh, and because I'm he clicked on the knight, he was so supposed to roll. Build that. Yeah. You roll and then he would... Six. So I collect one of them and then I built it. Next turn I roll six, I'll get two. So I rolled a seven. And dad pointed out that I have a mitt full of cards. So when you roll a seven, if you have more than seven cards in your hand, you have to get rid of half of them. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I do have more. So I have to get rid of eight cards. Half. Or sorry, four cards. Sorry, half. Better not be getting rid of them. All right, so I'm going to get rid of those four. Well, that could But I also get to move the rubber.
Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you now how to build a city. So I have two wheat and three rock. So you cannot just place a settlement on the board. You need to remove one of your settlement or a city on the board. You need to remove one of your settlements. So I'm going to remove this guy. Place my city. So now if an eight, 10 or five roll, I would get two of those resources instead of picking up just one. So that's the benefit. It is also worth two victory points instead of just one like the uh, settlements are. Okay, so we have a different trade going on. It's not a one for one. The kids really want wood, so they are giving me two sheep. which benefits me because of trade that I can do with the bank later. All right, I rolled a seven. Everybody count your cards. You didn't see me. You didn't go over to me. I have a whole lot again. This time I got nine. So if it's an odd number, you estimate down, so I still only have to get rid of four. The 11s are rolling a lot this game, which odds that's not what should happen. Never they usually don't, just like twos, twelves, threes, and elevens. They usually don't roll, but they really have been. Whereas the eights are not rolling, which they should roll more often as in odds. So this game is super fun because it's never going to be the same. Okay, dad just played one of the green special cards that we were kind of talking about in the kids video. So the green special cards from the development pile just kind of give you a they help you out in the game. So he played the card Year of Plenty, which allows him to take two of whatever he wants from the bank. They call it the bank. So he took his two resources, played his card, and now it goes back over beside the development card pile. And if you happen to run out, it would just get shuffled, but uh, we've never ever run out. Okay, Dad's going to play a development card, one of the green ones, and it is Monopoly. So this one is super awesome for the player who plays it, not so much for the rest of us. I want your wood. So you have to, we have to give him all of the wood in our hands. Okay. And dad is building a road. He now has the sheep port. So that's his brick. His whole length is now five, which is longer than anybody else's. So he now gets two bonus victory points. Oh, now it's six. So he will take the longest, the longest road and he gets two additional victory points. Now, in order for any of us to take it away from him, one, two, three, four, five, six, we would have to build seven. So you have to steal it from the other player. You, you, it's not the same. You have to build one more. Monopoly cards. Oh, don't I even. I pick everybody's rock. Oh, and by everybody, I mean yours. So the reason he played this at this moment was because we just, an eight, just rolled. So he watched me pick up three rock. And there's his city. So that's the best time to play the Monopoly cards. Watch the board. See what is being rolled. Don't take guesses. Take lessons. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, so we're gonna kind of do a different kind of trade as well. This one's not in the rule books, but we've kind of thrown it in and it works for us. Catan's all about being original. And that's why we love it. So the kids have two sheep and they, dad owns the two to one sheep port. So they would like to use his port so they will cash in the two sheep for whatever they want. And in order to use his sheep port, he gets a free resource from them. So again, that's not in the rule books, but it's just a fun little trade deal that we use. You get a free resource, other people can use uh, your harbor. All right, and that's the game. So One, dad two, won three, with 10 points. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there we go. And that's how you play the original Settlers of Catan. Check out our other videos and we will show you guys how to play all the other uh, Catan expansions. We have them all as well as lots of other fun games, family favorites, and uh, have fun!